No, no, what were you going to say, Matt? Should, should... Is it a case here that sometimes, like, the saying ignorance is bliss comes into it, the idea that maybe now, like, back in the day, like, with Motley Crue and all that, Motley Crue, for example, were horrendous heroin addicts and party animals and that, but they in the 80s, there was not the social media that they did stupid shit, and it might have got into the papers, but probably 99% of the stupid shit they did that would have got the same reaction was never reported, whereas now there's kind of this idea that you can get almost too far into a band's personal lives and beliefs and things like that. And is it the idea that, as Jamie said, how far is there the line between the art and the artist? Like, if I'd never heard this band and I never knew the history or anything, I might hear them and go, oh, do you know what? That's really, really good. I love this music. Find out more about them. Maybe even buy an album. Be completely unaware. But the fact that we've got this now, we've got this vast wealth of knowledge and the fact that we don't have the excuse of ignorance, I think that kind of does make the line a little more clear because as soon as you know something like that, can you really go on supporting them? Well, I mean, I have got one thing to drop quickly in. Um, strangely, a lot of people listen to the Charles Manson album. Um, <laughs> which is... If yeah, we know, yeah, 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 yeah. This in a yeah, bit, man. You know, um, <laughs> Should we be listening to the Charles Manson hey, album? Hey, Charles Manson never actually killed anyone. Let's yes, that thank you, James, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he true. did, you know, command the, you know, run a cult which murdered millions of people. Not millions of people, which <laughs> murdered, sorry, <laughs> me going too far there. Murdered a, a fair few people and had a, this cult attitude. They killed a pregnant woman. And then, from what I know, and I could be wrong here, ate her unborn child, like, and this was the guy who held it up, or if you'd like to put it that way, Hitler never killed anyone either. Do we have to forgive him? Uh, Hitler, he the nice Hitler, Hitler, I think Hitler it's a different conversation. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Hitler did kill it still, it still links in, though, the idea of, the kind of, like, the idea, the, no, you say, with Charles no, Manson no, and that, no, I've no, heard his music, I didn't personally rate it, I thought it was a bit weird, but... I mean, I mean like... Yeah, James, what do you want to say? Let's categorise this. Charles Manson, bit barmy, bit crazy. A bit barmy? He's a bit barmy, but... A bit know, barmy? A, a, few, a few idiots, including uh, Linda Sabin and all of that, thought, you know what, this guy's all right. I'll, I'll, I'll do a bit of dirty on the side for him. Da, da, da. And you got Hitler. He's a prick. Genocide. So is Charles no. Manson. <laughs> How have we got no. onto Hitler? I want to know. Uh, let, 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 me, let me rewind, actually. Kill. Let, let me rewind, actually. Let me, let's get back to the... <laughs> get to the <laughs> let's get back on topic, right? If we're going to talk about controversial, Slayer, in the 80s, and it's, uh, particularly in the 90s as well, there is no... Uh, even to this day, there is no other band that epitomises controversy just like Slayer do. When they came out of Rain and Blood, oh my God, it was like banned from every record store... Yeah, imaginable, unless it was like, you know, even on radio, but they somehow managed to break through it. Then you fast forward to when they released like Divine Intervention, when there was like uh, references in their material in regards to like police brutality and other things like that. Then they started to become more socially aware instead of like uh, uh, topically like uh, suggestive in, in terms of like. Uh, right-wing beliefs or things like that, which Slayer have actually been accused of in the past due to, like, uh, the, uh, the eagle emblem. And, you know, it's been related to, like, uh, you know, Nazi arts and Nazi uh, police, etc., etc. But there has been interviews where they haven't necessarily confirmed or denied it, but I have read a couple of interviews like, no, look, we don't associate with that. I mean, look, for, for example, Tom Araya, who's from Chile, and there was, I think there was like some other kind of like a, a Jewish sort of like bloodline within the Slayer um, entourage. There was a Cuban guy, wasn't there, as well? Briefly. Is that Slayer? I think there was a Cuban member briefly. I don't recall there being a Cuban member, but yeah, James is right. Tom Aria is from, uh, from uh, oh, I've forgotten what he said now. Chile. Uh, yeah, he's Chile. from Chile. He's a staunch, or used to be a staunch Christian, potentially Catholic, I can't remember. Yeah, and that, that's it, yeah. Yeah, that... that um, that sort of almost shielded him from being able mm. to write lyrics that were potentially anti-Christian. Mm. Um, but then we're sort of talking about are the lyrics and the art, can, can somebody who doesn't believe 
in something write a piece of art or, or piece of music that has potentially different beliefs. So can someone who is a Christian write metal that is inherently unchristian? You know, but that's, again, this word didn't write any music that, or to, to my knowledge, it, it was the social media side of it. It was their personal beliefs expressed outside of music that was the, the objectionable thing. And it's kind of like, I, I think, I don't know if you guys have been keeping track on what's going on with Azalea Banks recently. Uh, not Azalea Banks, is it? Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, it is Azalea Banks, right? Mm. Or the rapper. Yeah. The gobby yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, the gobby yeah. one. <laughs> the gobby she, one, right. She was, uh, yeah. she was on a plane recently... And she called uh, a member of the cabin crew uh, the F word, uh, the, the, the homophobic F word. Oh, I saw about that, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then she proceeded to do something else and something else. And again, it's like this, this is all appearing on social media. And she's essentially <coughs> dismantling her career. But then she, then you start getting into like the whole rap music thing and how there's homophobia in, in rap. Like... Accusations of homophobia as a whole against rap music, and uh, uh, I feel like I've drifted off topic again. But, uh... No, it's, it's, still, it's still within the kind of topic, though. I mean, like, um, if we kind of tie that in, let's go, um, let's go back a little bit to a band in terms of uh, the original subject of where with the transphobic comments. Let's talk about against me. Let's talk about Laura Jane Grace, probably mm. the most important front man, previous front man slash front woman. And oh, lovely though, person as well, just on our own. Yeah, yeah, yeah like a, one of the most important um, leaders of any band this generation. Now, the fact that um, Laura decided to come out and say, like, I'm not comfortable as a man, made the transition into the female. I mean, for a, a fair few people, it was kind of hard to get to grips with. Even uh, the dude from Life of Agony had um, sex change as well, transgender. But there was never really any kind of um, there was never really any kind of like stigma attached to the life of Agony. But when Against Me came out, because they was of a more commercial market, if we please, there seemed to be a lot of um, mixed opinions about it. And uh, but Laura Jane Grace to actually well as Against Me to make one of the most incredible albums of 2014, trans. Uh, Trans, is it transgender dysphoria blues or yeah. something like that? Yeah, incredible. And the subjects and the content within the lyrics of that album was absolutely beautiful. And the fact that there is now more supporters for Against Me um, because since uh, Lord Jane coming out makes it gives me a lot of like faith and hope that our music communities, our social communities, are more accepted and more open-minded to actually ignore the stigma which actually revolves around this very old-fashioned way of thinking and unfortunately in this case the dude i can't i don't even know what his name is he ain't that important but the guy from were has just basically just discredited any kind of merit to the fact that the members of gloss are or one or two members of gloss are transgender you know and it's just kind of like you know saying i don't like judas priest because rob halford's gay it's ridiculous. It's such a Victorian way of thinking, and uh, I just, I just, oh, it's just. But why thinking. do we, why do we think he did it? Do we think they, you know, do we think the guys in worse said it because they genuinely believe that, or did they say it as a bit of misguided smack talk at another band or an attempt to get publicity? Yeah, but, I mean, what, what is the reasoning behind it? Not that we there, can there really was... know because we're not them, but. There was it just third, oh, sorry. There was third, sorry, Mitch. Um, there was a third post that was made out on Twitter, and it was a picture, if I remember rightly, Chris. Um, I'm not sure. I've got the. There was a picture. There was a couple of comments first, which was a little bit snide, which could have been taken either way. And then there was a picture that came out, I and mean, that was the tweet that basically people just went, "Right, okay, screw you. You're being an absolute tosser about this." And that's when word got called out and. I think probably about an hour after this picture was actually brought up on Twitter. Run for cover record just went, no, nope, 